Hi there, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Kevin Preston Toy Box. Tonight featuring 1967's International Road Race by Eldon. This was their professional series that they brought out in 1967, which featured 124th scale cars that ran at 12 volts. And they were much faster, completely different than the typical 6 volt Eldons that we all know and love. And this is a gigantic set huge the difference between 132nd and 124th is big here's a comparison of the 132nd track to the 124th the box art is is really neat uh tells you all about the items that you'll find inside the box the layout which i'll show you more in detail later could only fit in my master bedroom moving furniture around and it's quite large I mean, that's a good, I don't know, 12 feet. And it features two Monza banked curves. These are really banked, pretty, pretty good degree here, as you can see. And if you don't give the cars enough gas going through, they uh, may stall. And if you give too much gas, they'll easily twist off. So uh, it's really nice. There's aprons supplied that extend the width of the straight pieces as you go into the curve. And uh, this particular international, I only know of two of these 124 sets. One is uh, international and uh, I forgot the other one, high performance or something. There are only two of these style sets that I know of, but you could buy the cars separately. On that note, if you look at the brochure that came with the set, at this point in time, Eldon supported three different form factors for racing. Traditional 132nd, the 124th, and the HO. The International Road Race set came with four car bodies and two chassis. The bodies were a Porsche Carrera 6, a Ferrari Dino, a Ford GT, and a Chaparral. The bodies were vacuum formed and completely different from the traditional Eldon 6 volt cars. Not only were they more like a shell, almost like what you see on modern RC cars, but they attached to the aluminum chassis through these holes. More on the cars in just a bit. But the bodies are real sharp and decals were furnished as well. Of course, one of the most interesting parts of the 124 12 volt set from Eldon is the cars themselves. Each set, at least the international set that I have, came with two chassis and four bodies. Not unlike some of the Eldon 6-volt sets where they had multiple bodies and would, they'd give you a couple of chassis to, to uh, move them around on. Uh, right now, uh, what I want to do is get the cars in good working order. I've already tested these out on a test track. Uh, I will show you in a few minutes uh, them running on the full setup track that I have. So, if we take the first one, the red car here, I've already started work on this one, and as you can see, I've replaced the brushes. I'm going to show you how to do the brushes on the other car here, and I've replaced the tires as well, the, just the rear tires. The interesting thing about these cars is the bodies are completely different than the Eldon 6-volt cars. They're vacuum-formed, which is this very thin, uh, kind of flexible plastic, very durable. And these cars are in really good shape. I think these, these sets came out in about 67, 68. And they are much more of a professional, quote-unquote, level than the Eldon 6-volt cars. You've got wheels that actually screw on and have lock nuts to lock them on. You have an aluminum chassis here. And a very similar guidepost brush holder and brush arrangement to the cars. We'll show you how they're different in a minute. Just to give you an idea, the centrally located motor and the pinion gears. All of there's a lot of adjustments you can make in in these cars too that you can't on the on the smaller cars. And they're overall quite a bit larger. So the first thing I recommend when you're working on these cars is get a space and put down towels. So if you drop some of these very tiny screws they'll bounce and you'll lose them somewhere. I'm working on towels with paper towels on top to grab and hold anything that might fall. The first thing you'll notice about the chassis, and we'll, we'll take apart the gray car right now, or is it silver? <laughs> I don't know. The screws are actually on the sides of the car. 
and I use a small flathead screwdriver and take them right off and put them aside. Originally, if you look at the instruction sheet, you got these screws in a bag and they're, they're, they're self-tapping screws into the aluminum chassis. And they've got some interesting notes in there that you don't seldom see. They say that there's a good line in there that, that stated, if you strip the threads on these screws, fine. Just get longer screws the same size at your hardware store and put nuts on them. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. So here's the chassis. It's very simple and kind of elegant. You've got your, your crown gear here and your pinion. Another difference is, as you can see right here, your crown gear has a screw, a set screw, and you can adjust the, the throw of it. You can move it back and forth up against the pinion. Here, if you look very closely, there are, there's a spacer and then a lock nut. And what you want to do is you want to make you want to make sure that the spacer and there's not excessive play back and forth in the wheels at the same time not binding. This one was really bound up when I got it, and I loosened one of the lock nuts and lubricated things a little bit, and uh, took care of that problem. What I noticed when I started racing this one, this particular one around, there was some drag and it seemed like the the wheel was off center, and I didn't notice it, but sure enough, the thing is bent. If you look at it right right there you can see the difference from this side here I'm trying to get the car closer this side here to this side here this one is really bent so we're gonna bend that back up and it will also you can see that this is this tab that holds this axle is bent a little bit too so we're literally going to take a pair of pliers and fix this. And they even say in the owner's instruction sheet that you can make micro adjustments on this car if there's damage that you need to rectify. So I'm going to just, as a matter of fact, just to be on the safe side. Put a little extra padding on here as I make these adjustments. What's well, getting there? Well, not perfect. I think if you wanted to get in any better than that, I take out the axles, put it in between a couple pieces of wood, and uh, maybe a, a small vise. But it's pretty good, and the axle rolls real freely. Uh, this one I did not yet replace the brushes. These, were, these are the brushes that the car came with. The other car, the brushes were gone. And these are getting so short that they still make contact, but I think it's time to change them. So we're going to change them. As I said, the, the guide and brush carrier is very similar, but there's some key differences. The wires actually just form a hoop. They don't have ends on them. They're just bare-ended. You form a hoop and you let the screw that screws through the brush also crimp down the wire up against the guide. So they're a little different, a little more time consuming to uh, get in there. And uh, again, I'm going to do it on inboard here. The brushes are the 124 scale brushes. Okay. And all they really are different is that, the, is that they have a hole in there. I swore that these had a brass uh, overlay that you went through. And maybe there's some out there from different manufacturers or different years that, that have that. But this is literally just a hole through here. And it looks to me like it's the exact same width as the regular Eldon brushes. You know, same material, same width, same everything. They just put a hole in. I don't know if they put some heat on it or anything like that I really it's hard to tell but that's all it is so what you do take your thin screwdriver
and loosen this screw here. And be very careful because it's a really small screw. And you'll see that, that that's just a hoop. And what we do is we remove the brush from the guide. I can probably go to the bottom because the the brush is uh, well splayed out. There we go. And that's pretty used up. And I'm going to take one of my new ones out of the bag. As we'll see if we can go this way. Once you've got the screw started through the hole of the brush and into the shoe, wrap your wire around from left to right, curl it around and then slowly screw this in. This is a very tedious process. So as we do the other side, we slip the brush down from the inside, wiggle it around. Sometimes they will, you know, splay out and you can't get them through. I always thought that Eldon made these always a little too narrow, but we'll pull it through with a pair of pliers. Don't yank too hard because you'll yank it all the way through. And then what you're going to want to do on this side is bend it over, over that hole right there. I know it might be very hard to see, but you get the idea. So we have our new brushes on, and note they're turned down a little bit at the ends, like they should be. The chassis is bent back straight. Now we're going to take a look that this, this pinion gear has, has moved a little bit. So what we're going to do is, or the crown gear actually, we're going to move that inboard a little bit and tighten the set screw on it. Loosen it. And note how we can move it. See that? And it's got some knurls on the axle right here for the set screw. So we're going to take advantage of those knurls. And I say that because I like to just say the word knurl. Move it forward right up against the pinion gear and tighten. It should move freely. So that's our chassis all, all nice and straightened out. Now let's talk a little bit about the tires. These are the original tires, and um, as you can see, if you squeeze them, they're cracked. And these wear are worn out just like all Eldon tires, right? And because this is a 124 car, and they made about you know, one ten thousandth of as many of these as, as the six volt cars, I was concerned about getting tires. And if you look at the wheel, the wheel has little knurls on it, okay, and the inside of the tire, if you can see this, I don't know if you can see it, but it has little knurls as well. I don't know if you can, there you go, you can probably see it right there. See that little, uh, oh, it's not knurling, but it's a little cross hatching or a little kind of molded in there. Uh, slots that more or less grip onto here and keep the tire from slipping. So it's, where am I going to find a tire like that? Well, fortunately, uh, Smile and Rays had something close. He recommended the EICN tires, which are a little thinner. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. The new EICN tires on the left, they're thinner, not so much uh, where they go over the wheel but the outside contact area 
but hopefully with the newer compounds that Ray uses I think it'll be a trade-off so I've already raced these around a little bit and they seem to grip really well and oh he has the same knurling inside his tires if you can see that I don't know if you can but trust me it's there and this is for a different application but he recommended it and they go on really easy really nice we talked a little bit about the uh, the lock nut right here and all that that you hold in place while you turn the wheel and lock it against the lock nut well what you want to do is you want to hold on to that lock nut and keep it from moving into the body or into the uh, yeah into the body into the body spacer with this really cool little wrench that should come with your set if not you find a thin wrench that is close and as a screwdriver on the other end the idea is this is your all-in-one tool to take the bodies off and manipulate things and what you do is you put this wrench right on that lock nut in there okay keep the the wrench steady and then loosen or tighten the tire against the lock nut okay interestingly I have this set which the, this wrench which is Mark Japan but I have another one in, in the bag that came with the set marked Cox Cox so it's all legit You don't have to over tighten these screws either these bodies are interesting they remind me of the very thin plastic bodies you get on modern RC cars and trucks and uh, pretty cool it came with uh, stickers also the set which the previous owner or owners applied to the red car but uh, I still have some on the sheet and I don't go much for stickers but here is the other one that I already put brushes on as well as fresh rear tires and uh, let's go watch them race <laughs> interestingly the only place I could set up this massive layout was in my master bedroom moving some furniture around to accommodate this uh, it is huge the tracks are like huge Elden tracks, but they slide together without creating the V and snapping down. You push them together and then you lock them with little white pieces of uh, plastic, little white tabs. And then the pylons are these stackable pieces of plastic snapped together that are kind of a pain to, to get together from a bag of pieces to prop up the, the Monza banks on this thing. The 12 volt transform is really cool. It's it's got like a black crinkle finish on it, almost like an old Bell and Howell eight millimeter movie projector, and it's got a, a on off switch and an Elden label on it. And then the wires to connect everything are actually plugs. Uh, the center one is the plug for the transformer, and then the hand controllers plug in here. The hand controllers are really really nice. They're the plunger type. And they have a ventilation panel at the back. And you hold them like this and uh, activate your speed by pushing down on them. But they're really nice quality. Really, really cool. Lap counter has a familiar sound to it. Like the smaller sets. It's a lot more solid and it doesn't skip passes. Here's a close-up of one of the pylons. They're made of individual little stacking discs. So you can make them different heights. Now here is the silver car that we just put brushes in and tuned. I mean, they just get right up, they pick up right and go.
The Elding International Road Race Set is 124 scale. It's by Chloe!